Google Photos will no longer support uploading unlimited photos as of June 2021. It's a sad time. So it's time to start looking at replacements. This will be the first. Let's get started. All right, everybody, welcome back to Gadget Conquest. Now, uh, I started off this video on kind of a somber note talking about Google Photos, so let's get into detail into that before I uh, talk about this device here that I have. Um, Google Photos, if for those of you that don't know, offers unlimited photo storage on the cloud for people who choose to upload their photos in Google's high quality format, which means it's just compressed. Uh, but it is an unlimited storage and it does give you access to Google's uh, cool sharing features and memories and other such features. Um, it's, it's, it's honestly really, really cool. And being able to do unlimited of those photos is also really awesome. I've been using Google Photos for many years now um, and I think I have well over 50 gigabytes of photos and videos on Google Photos at this point in time, which is nuts to think about. But um, in June of 2021, those photos and videos that you've had up until this point will stay free. They will not count against you, but any new photos and videos that you upload to Google Photos will start to count towards the storage space that you have in your drive. Now, Google is deciding to unify the drive space on all of their Google products into one account. So uh, Google Drive, Gmail, Google Docs, and Google Photos will all be using that same storage space. It's 15 gigabytes if you don't pay for it, and then uh, the tiers are 100 gigabytes, 200 gigabytes, two terabytes, uh, at 10, 40, and so on and so forth. They, they get pretty high up there and pretty expensive at a monthly price. Um, now, that's not to say that it's not worthwhile to get those. I personally pay the $3 a month uh, that it costs to get the 200 gigabyte plan simply because I use it to back up my YouTube videos. Um, and it's pretty useful. But not everybody has the money to be spending on uh, those plans, especially as you get up there in cost. Um, and maybe some people would like to take this as an opportunity to take their uh, photos and their videos and store them privately. This is where this device come in. This is Ibi, 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 Ibi. I'm gonna go with Ibi. It is a uh, photo and video manager, and it is a local device. So it's by Sam, SanDisk, so Western Digital. Uh, and what it is is just some like a like a home cloud hub for your photos and videos. This one in particular has a terabyte of uh, drive capacity, so you'll be able to store quite a few photos and videos. And the way that this one works in particular, um, or this solution works, if you need more capacities, you're actually able to connect more than one device to a single account, and it will spread the load between those devices as it needs to. Uh, so let's get into it and check it out and see how it works as a solution um, or a potential replacement for Google Photos. Uh, where is my knife? Here it is. Uh, All right, then let's dive into this bad boy. There we go, one. Uh, while I'm here, that was dangerous. While I'm here, let me mention the price of this thing. It is $99. Um, it's $100 at Best Buy and Walmart, I believe, but if you buy it directly from uh, Western Digital, it's $130. Um, I don't see any reason to buy it directly from Western Digital at that point, then, unless you have to. Let's get this open. Come on, you. There we go. So right here on the top, it says, here is your photo album for the digital age. Let's get started. That's pretty cute. And we will just open this here. I'll, I'll open it like this so you guys can see. So we have this. This is a getting started. Ooh, oh, uh, I love it. 
Um, wow, that is the most simple getting started. Two steps, plug it in, get the app on your phone. All right, I'm into it. Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna need to get that app. So let's get my phone out and I will download that app while we, what's the name of the app? Is it just Ibi? The name of the app is Ibi hyphen the smart photo manager. Uh, it's right there. I'll zoom in on that so you can actually see it. And I will let that download. Only 10,000 downloads, which means this thing probably doesn't sell that well. But we'll see how it goes. There is some limited warranty guide and tech support information there. We've got a piece of cardboard and we have the actual device itself. Wow, that's cute. Let's put that there. We also have another piece of cardboard and in the bottom here, so there's nothing else in here, but there is actually on the inside a pretty cool little design. I wonder if I can open it and get that design on the outside. Let's see. So if you go like this and then we peel this bit off, I think. Oh, but it's breaking apart. We can try to use the knife. Oops. See if we can get it open <clears throat> without completely destroying the photo on the inside. I like stuff like this. I like little, little Easter eggs in unboxings. I think it's especially cute. Plus it's a, it's a good way to get people to properly uh, take apart their boxes. So there you go. So you got a little, little image there. It's a, a, I'm assuming a father playing with his son or if you're nasty, a man playing with a child he abducted. So one of those things. <laughs> and this just gets folded up nice and neatly and thrown over there because I'm a monster. All right, so what do we got in here? We have a box that is difficult to open. All right, here we go. And this is, <gasps> no, it's just a, a power adapter. So power adapter, let's see how long this cable is and let's see how much power we can get out of this adapter too. So this cable actually looks like it might be pretty long. How do I, how do I get the plastic off? Okay. The plastic on this, <laughs> really? Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, it is, <laughs> there's a little pull tab on this side. You, you, you're not gonna be able to see it. Even if I crop in, you won't be able to see it. But there's a little pull tab on this side and whoever wrapped this plastic did it in reverse. So the pull tab that you're supposed to be able to use to easily get it off is on the inside. <laughs> Oh boy, a Discord message. How interesting. All right, there we go. Let's see how long this cable is now. Okay. This is, ooh, quite a bit long, quite a bit. Um, a meter and a half, maybe? My wingspan is, pretty sure my wingspan is greater than a meter. So I'm thinking this is probably a meter and a half length cable here. Uh, let's see what we've got as far as power goes. This thing uses 12 volts at 1.5 amps. So 18 watts. Yeah, that sounds right. So this is 18 watts right here. Uh, I mean, it's a barrel plug, so you can't really use another one, but if you needed the replacement, 18 watts is what you're looking for on this barrel plug adapter. Now, there's also, let's look at the device itself. Now, actually, if I just look in through the bottom, I can see into the device. Is there an easy way to, can we take this apart? Is there an easy way to do that? Let's see. Hmm. I don't think there is an easy way to take this apart. Oh, there totally is. It's got latches. Okay, 
Maybe in another video I'll take this apart. For now, let's just remove all of this stuff and get the peel off. There we go. Nice and clean. We've got two inputs on here. We've got the DC in for the barrel plug. And we've also got a USB A. This is, uh, according to the documentation, this is a USB 3.1 Gen 1. So this is a five gigabit per second port. And this is used primarily for, if you have a flash drive with media on it, you can put it on here and it'll dump onto the device itself, which is a pretty cool feature. If I look inside, I don't see any spinning discs. Oh wait, oh yes I do. Okay, so it is using a Western Digital Blue two and a half inch mechanical hard drive. So this is a spinning drive in here. I do see it as a one terabyte model number is WD-10SPZX. I wonder if that is a 7200 RPM or a 5400 RPM drive. Let's figure that out real quick. What was it again? It's a WD-10SPZX. WD-10SPZX. And here it is. The 10 SPZX. And it is a 5400 RPM drive. So it is the slower end of the uh, mechanical hard drives, but it is a laptop hard drive. So it doesn't, uh, it, it, that's pretty standard for a laptop hard drive is that particular speed. And while it is kind of disappointing not seeing an SSD in here, SanDisk does make SSDs. So does Western Digital, Digital actually. Um, I'm not that torn up about it. It's not that big a deal. It's just for storing photos and videos. Um, this is more for, this is for storage. It's not really as much for streaming or anything like that. So it's not a big a deal if it's using a slower mechanical drive. Now let's go ahead and plug this in. and see what we got going on. All right, so I see a light right here at the front. I'm gonna get my app out. Should have downloaded correctly if I can find it, Ibby. All right, so I'm loading up the app. Welcome to Ibby. You have to accept their user agreement. And then the first thing I am greeted with is a uh, account sign in or register. Now, this for their cloud services, you do need to have an account. So I am going to quickly create an account. And while I do that, I will, <laughs> I'm noticing that my camera battery is about to die. So how about I create an account real quick and I change the battery on my camera and I come right back. Let's do that. So I will see you in just a second. Welcome back. I have replaced the battery on my camera and I have set up my account. Now, all it asked for was a username, uh, an email address, a password, and then my first and last name. Uh, although it looked like my first name wasn't required, but my last name was, whatever. And now it's asking for uh, location information in order to find Wi-Fi networks. So we'll see how this works out. Uh, I'm going to allow location only while I'm using the app. And now it is looking for the IBI, which I probably shouldn't be doing that. Now, if I feel it, I can feel, the vib I can feel it vibrating. Yeah, I can feel like a low vibration coming out of it, which makes sense because it is a mechanical drive in there. So it's going to have some vibration. But when I look at it, the drive is suspended inside of the enclosure here. Um, so it's actually probably doing a really good job of absorbing those vibrations. Now, it says it found the device. I'm going to click continue and let's see what we got. Okay, so now it's asking to connect to the Wi-Fi, searching for networks, 
and I can choose the network that my phone is currently connected to and type in my network password. Okay, so now it says connecting to Wi-Fi. AB will now join your Wi-Fi network. Let's see how this goes. All right, connected to the Wi-Fi. And now it's a setting up for first use, adding your account to the device, optimizing storage. And now it's uh, a analytics opt-in. So the analytics that it says, let's see, what data do we collect? It says it collects usage data may include items such as device configuration, CPU, and other usage statistics by application, API calls, service crash information. I am going to not share that information. And then uh, the next thing that you can do is you can turn on auto backup, which is pretty cool. I'm going to turn on auto backup, which is actually what I wanted this device for in the first place. So I'm going to click continue, allow it access to my photos. Uh, now it's asking what folders on my device I would actually like to back up. Um, I'm going to choose my DCIM photo uh, folder and probably just that. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna stick with just that folder. All right, continue. So now it says almost done. Invite your favorite people to your IBI together. So this is kind of the cool thing about IBI and why I wanted to showcase it first because honestly, it is more of a complete replacement for Google Photos um, than any of the uh, other devices that would be used and that I will be, uh, or, or other solutions that would be used, especially ones that are locally home-based solutions. Um, it has social features, so you can actually invite other people to join your IBI and actually allow them to upload photos to your cloud, um, which is pretty cool. And then they can actually get their own devices and have their own IBI clouds and actually allow you to share photos between the two clouds and sort of give you kind of a, uh, a more social vibe to it, especially because you'll be able to do things like comment on photos and do things like that. Um, so I'm going through and it's telling me about the social features so people can get their own private storage on your IBI device. Um, and you can have the option to share those photos between those people or I can sort of, if you're in a household, for example, say you have family, you can say, okay, well, I want everybody to have their own personal section of the IBI that they can share, uh, put photos on, and we can share them with each other, and they don't have to share everything with me if they don't want to. And then uh, it's just going through those features and telling me about them and how to share photos with each other. So the uh, feature they call inner circle, it's just a section that is shared between everybody, basically. And then telling you how to do that, and it's asking me to invite someone. I don't have anybody to invite right now, so I'm just going to click later, and then it says, you're all set. Cool, so now it took me to the actual photo uh, app, and if I open it up, you can see here, how about instead I just uh, record my screen, no sounds, Okay, cool. So there we go. All right, so I'm recording my screen. I will move over here a bit so that I can put the screen right there. So you can see uh, I've got quite a few photos here, photos of my office, photos of the new office that my company moved into, some random selfies that I took, some random jewelry, all these. These are all my photos um, and I can go through and they are, it is organizing them using the metadata uh, the date metadata in the photos, just like Google Photos would. And I can actually uh, click the My Photos drop down here. And this is where I can actually add members to my inner circle. I can actually also click the calendar here and go through and actually see the photos based on uh, timestamps and go through the different timestamps. Uh, this is the uh, actual inner circle area that we're in right now. So this was the center section is my private photos. And then this section is the inner circle where we have um, photos that are shared with other people. And then uh, on the far right, we have albums and we can actually create albums, which is super cool. Um, 
and then you can open this menu over here and you can see there's a copy USB feature and that's the feature that allows you to have a USB drive with photos on it and plug it into the back of the IBI and actually copy all of those pictures onto the IBI itself. You can import photos from your device in other locations on your device. Um, there's also cloud functionality. If you click do more and then accept that, you can uh, do things like mirroring photos to uh, devices like Fire TVs, Apple TVs, Roku's, and things like that. There's also the, uh, I believe, Mirror It is their cloud backup subscription. So you can actually have, you can pay for a cloud backup subscription from SanDisk or um, that will back up the data on your IBI onto SanDisk, SanDisk's cloud so that you can have a extra level of security. Now at that point, why wouldn't you just pay for Google Photos? But this is more about having a private local that is backed up and that way you have two copies instead of where Google Photos, you would just have the one copy which is stored on Google Photos unless you count the copy on your device as well. Um, but you could do things like that. And there's a desktop app which is basically the same features but on a larger interface so it looks better and works a little bit better. But that's about it for the, I'm going to stop recording. Okay, but that's about it for the device and the social features of it. Now, let's talk about the stuff that I like about this and the stuff that I don't like about it. And then we'll get into the uh, conclusion here. So what I like about this is first of all, the size. It's using a laptop hard drive, so it's very, very tiny. As you can see, it's actually smaller in, if I go to my wrist, it's actually smaller than my hand by, if you go to my middle finger, that's probably like two, two and a half inches. Uh, so it is actually smaller than my hand and it's actually, about the diameter of my palm, as you can see there. Now I probably shouldn't be picking it up like that, but it's not that big a deal. Um, so it's very, very small. It's quiet. That laptop hard drive, especially being, being only a 5,400 RPM drive, is not gonna be very loud. It's going to be a pretty quiet drive. I can't hear it over the sound of my voice. If I get, if I get very close to it, I can hear it. You can, I don't know if you could hear that, but, it's very, very quiet. Uh, the laptop hard drive isn't gonna put out a lot of heat. It's going to put out some heat, but it's not gonna be that much as a laptop drive, come on. And honestly, the aesthetic of it is really nice. I like the, the white cylinder look. I think it looks pretty good. Now, things that I don't like about it. I don't like that it's only one terabyte. They don't have other models available. Sandus does not have other models available. There's one terabyte and one terabyte only for hundred dollars. That's it. You cannot get this in a two terabyte configuration, three, whatever. You can't do that. You get the one terabyte and you stick with it. Now, can you mod this to have a larger laptop drive in it or maybe even put in an SSD? Maybe. I will try it. We'll find out. But as it comes with the warranty, uh, it's still in place. It's one terabyte, it's not expandable, except for the fact that you can uh, buy another one and have two of them linked to the same account. That's the only way that you can expand the storage, but at that point, now you have two of these things. So, and it, it's, it's another wallet that you have to deal with. It's more space and it's far less efficient that way. What if I want 10 terabytes? What do I have to buy 10 of these things? It's not realistic. So for an expandable solution, it's not there. But the social features of it, the backup with how easy that was, the setup, the backup, the quick start was literally two steps. The It was easier setting this up than it was setting up the fitness band, which is just a fitness band. It shouldn't be that hard. Um, this was very, very simple. So I'll give it that. But at the end of the day, I didn't. I don't like the fact that it's not expandable. However, for a lot of people, the expandability, the, the, the non-expandability doesn't matter. Uh, you over there, you're probably one of those people it doesn't matter for. This would probably be great for you. But that's what I don't like about it. It's just the, the lack of expandability. Now, conclusion time. Do I recommend this thing to anyone? Yes, absolutely. This thing is 
this thing is awesome, really. Like, like take the expandability out of the, the non-expandability out of the, the equation. The fact that you get all of these cloud features included in the price of the, per, you know, the initial purchase, the sharing, the, the um, automatic backup on your phone and any, any device that has the app and is connected to the same account, your desktop, all of that stuff that would normally be set up with a different service, um, the fact that all of it works together and it's pretty seamless and it's very, very easy to set up is super, super, super cool. I really like it and I definitely recommend this to anyone who just wants a simple solution that can replace Google Photos or maybe Apple Photos. Um, if that's what it's called, I think it's Apple Photos, um, that can replace those solutions for them while still allowing them to keep their photos with them locally. You know, like they, they own their pictures and there's no sharing it with Google and ending up seeing it being used for an advertisement or something like that. None of that would exist because it is yours, it is stored on your, um, Device privacy is a big thing for a lot of people. So if it is a thing for you and you're not very tech savvy, so you can't use maybe one of the more advanced solutions that would be available to people um, and you want something that's simple to set up and doesn't take up a lot of space, this is it. This is really it. And honestly, at $100, this thing for most people, unless, that, unless you're someone who's constantly taking video and wanting to upload those videos, this probably will fill up pretty quickly. But if you're someone who just takes pictures and you just want storage for your pictures, one terabyte is gonna take a long time to fill up if it's just pictures. Especially if it's pictures that you take on your phone, it's not gonna fill up a terabyte that quickly. It will take years. And that's kind of the point and actually pretty cool. So if it takes you two years, for example, to fill up a terabyte, right? But you want to have a terabyte of space. If you were on Google Drive, well, you would be paying for the two terabytes of space because one terabyte isn't, option, isn't optional. So you would be paying $100 a year for their annual plan and you would pay for it for two years. Now you've paid for 200, uh, now you've paid $200 for two terabytes for two years and you've already gone over the price of this thing. Now, expandability is there with the Google Drive option, but this is just so much more convenient and cheaper in the long run, especially if you, realistically aren't gonna fill up that one terabyte of space. But um, I think that's it. I've ranted enough about this thing. This thing gets a solid recommendation for me for anyone who's not tech savvy and just wants a quick quick setup and, and, and easy, good looking device. I think this is perfect for anyone like that. And honestly, I think that this thing is actually a really good Christmas present. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, put this on a buy, put this on a wish list or, or, or buy it for someone. They might actually really enjoy using it. Who knows? Um, but yeah, that's it from me. I'm actually going to be going into a, a few videos like this, uh, mostly because of the fact that I am very bummed out that Google, Google Photos is not going to be free anymore. Uh, so I'm going to do a few videos of these. It's going to be a little bit of a mini series for me. Um, this is just the first device and we'll go into things that are more advanced and more hacky in the future. So look forward to those videos and don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Don't forget to dislike this video if you disliked it. Leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, you, subscribe. <laughs> anyway, have a good day, have a good week and I will see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>